It's time for a new episode of Faith in Fairways with the founder, Brad Thorberg, who after more than 16,000 lessons taught to over 2,000 golfers, has discovered the most forgotten and overlooked part of your golf game that is keeping you from playing your most consistent and confident golf ever. Now, here is your host, Brad Thorberg. What is up, Birdie Crew? Brad here, coming to you with episode, I believe we're on episode 13 already. Hard to believe over three months doing this podcast. It's been a blast. Today's episode all about why you blow up on the back nine. We're going to get into that. You know, there's two main reasons you blow up on the back nine. You know, one, just unnecessary pressure you apply to yourself and two, mental fatigue. And we're going to dive into those two topics and then we're going to get into kind of my five top ways to help combat blowing up on the back nine and, and we'll give you some tips that you can take away right away and start applying, you know, this coming weekend to start playing better golf and, and more consistent golf over the course of 18 holes. You know, often I hear I was playing so well, you know, and we've all been there. I mean, how many of us have played and we started off and, and you know, the front nine, we had a good round going and, and we have this belief that, hey, if I do this on the back nine, I could have a career round or a great round or, you know, I should be able to just whoop up on my buddies and then it just falls apart. You know, how does this happen? Well, number one reason is you apply pressure. You, you get through the first nine with a good round going thinking, man, if I do that or a stroke or two better, I can play best round I've ever played. But you apply this pressure that now all of a sudden you have to do incredible things. You have to not make mistakes. So you start putting this pressure on of, of don't make mistakes, which gets you tense and gets you guiding the golf club and trying to force golf shots instead of swinging free and relaxed. So now you've added pressure. I mean, think of the opposite because I get this a lot too. You know, over the last 15, 16 years of teaching golf lessons, I've had a lot of clients who come in and just blow up on the front nine and then they play incredible. I had a client just last week, Mark, he shot like 46, 36, 46 on the front nine, 36 on the back. How does this happen? Well, because after 46, he mentally shut down and said, ah, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm not going to play a good round today. I don't care. So there's no pressure. He's relaxed. Just like I mean, we've all been there, you know, the saying, the second golfer's better, you know, so you hit a a shot out of bounds or you hit a shot, you chunk the snot out of it. So you toss the ball out of the pocket just to hit again and you flush it and knock it right in the middle of the green. How does that happen? Because there's less pressure. It doesn't matter. You're not as stressed and pressure creates tension. And when you have tension in your golf swing, it throws your timing off no matter how good your mechanics are. Guys, I mean, when you apply tension to good mechanics, you're still going to hit bad shots. They're just not as bad as a person with poor mechanics because, you know, just angle through the ball. So when you have extra things that need to be timed within your golf swing and you start squeezing a hair tighter and you get quicker because as you get nervous, I mean, think of this. I don't know what, you know, field or profession you're in, but imagine you're an expert in your field and you have to give a presentation in an auditorium with 5,000 people listening and you practice this speech over and over and over and over this presentation and it's exactly 10 minutes, 10 minutes, because that's the time you have. You have 10 minutes to give it. You practice it over and over. It's 10 minutes. You get in front of the lights and the microphone and 5,000 people staring at you. I guess that'd be 10,000 eyeballs. And what happens? You get nervous. So what happens when you get nervous? You get quicker. You start speaking faster because you're uncomfortable. So when you're out there and you start applying pressure to yourself on that back nine to do well or do a few shots better, you get tense with your grip and you get quicker with your tempo and that just magnifies the faults within your swing. And even if you have a mechanically sound swing, you're still going to have some miss hits and that's where they show up because of the tension, because of the sped up tempo. And that's all because you're applying unnecessary pressure. Just go out and stick to your game plan. You know, we talked about that last week in episode 12 of of how to create a game plan or the cheat sheet before you take the test on the golf course. So if you missed that one, definitely go back and listen to last week. And that'll tell you exactly how to warm up like a tour player to step onto that first tee, just oozing confidence. But you got to have that game plan. That game plan allows you to stay relaxed on the back nine because you don't need to shift your thinking that you need to do more. You stick to your game plan. And over the course of nine holes, 
you're going to score the same as you did on the front or a shot or two better, maybe a shot or two worse, but you're close. And that's where practice, which we talked about in episode 10, how to practice properly as you keep practicing and putting in those hours, you're going to see the fruits of that labor and you're going to be shattering your career rounds in no time, but you got to stick to the plan. You got to start practicing the right way. That'll help release that pressure you apply to yourself because there shouldn't be any pressure. Guys, this is, this is recreational activity. You know, this is fun. I mean, think of how many, I see this all the time. How many, you could sit on the patio of the clubhouse looking at 18 green and you're lucky to see like one or two smiling people out of 16, you know, the last four foursomes to walk off, there might be one or two people smiling. Usually it's sad, but you could sit on a patio or a deck at the base of a mountain watching skiers. Cause I live in Colorado flying down. They could have fell down on their butt the whole way down that mountain, but they're grinning ear to ear. And it's the same thing. They're investing time and money into a recreational activity. That's all this is. This isn't your livelihood. This is for just fun. So keep it fun. You don't need to be applying pressure that's unnecessary to yourself that's screwing up the back nine of your round because you're tense and you're getting quicker with your tempo. So stop doing it. And I know that's easier said than done. But as you start retraining your mental focus with your practice, in your pre-round warm-ups and, and visualization techniques, it's going to help you stay relaxed. It's going to help you have more belief within yourself that you can do this, that you don't need to force something to happen. Just stick to the game plan and be relaxed. Take deep breaths. And all that's going to help you stop the blow-up. So stop putting that unnecessary pressure and stick to the plan that you created by warming up properly. And it's going to get better because you're practicing better now. So that's number one. Number two is mental fatigue. So even if you're not putting the pressure, what I see so often over 18 holes and four to five hours out there is mental fatigue. And mental fatigue is going to cause a lapse in judgment and and poor focus. And all of a sudden you start making those one or two mental miscues where, where you make that decision to go for it when you know you shouldn't have, but you gave in. And you did it anyways because you're tired. You're tired on the back nine. You feel like you need to make up a shot. So you're not only applying pressure, but then mentally you're making the poor decision because you're fatigued. And what causes that is you're not fueling your body properly that day or on the golf course. So leading up to getting there or on the course, you don't have gas in the gas tank to get you through four and a half hours of grueling golf. I know it's recreation. I said that it's fun. It's enjoyment. But you're out there for four and a half hours taking a test. You know, for those of you who had, you can remember back that far, you know, when you had to take tests in schools, exams, you know, finals, SATs, ACT tests, when you sit there and you're grueling through thinking for just two or three hours, but now you're out there for four to five, thinking through everything, it's exhausting. Your brain is burning up a lot of calories just through thought. And now you're exhausted. And when you're exhausted, you're going to make poor judgment calls. And you're going to start to lose focus. You're going to start to wander on what, you know, he's doing or or what's for dinner or what am I doing after this? And your mind wanders. You're not focused on the shot at hand, which is the only thing you should be focused on is the very next shot. Not the last one, not the next three holes, but the shot you have right now. What is the best option to get you closer to the hole within your ability level? So you get mentally exhausted and fatigued. Another part of that is dehydration is one of the number one things. They did a study. I can't remember who it was. I'd have to look it up. I had it in one of my emails that I sent out to my birdie crew um, where I talked about hydration because this this group did this study and they factored in that you you lose, I think it was you were losing 12% of your total distance per club as your body is dehydrated and you become 20 some percent more inaccurate. I mean, it was crazy. The splatter pattern and distance consistency was all over as it became dehydrated, because when you become dehydrated, you lose focus and you're not as precise with your thinking and your mechanical movements because you're dehydrated. So being hydrated is so, so crucial. You know, are you drinking enough water when you wake up and through the day and on the golf course? Are you getting in your electrolytes? I mean, those are very, very important things that most of us overlook because like, ah, we're just going out and golfing. Yeah, but there's so much more than that. I mean, it's four and a half, five hours of your day. You know, it's a fifth or sixth of your whole day you're out there and leading up to it. And you're making, you know, 35 to 45 explosive movements. You're walking, you're in the sun, you're, you're doing rotational movements, you're testing your balance and you're thinking like you're taking a four hour exam. 
you need to be hydrated. You need to feel your body correctly. Otherwise, you're just making poor judgment calls. You give up. You hit a few bad shots. And you're just exhausted mentally, and you just give up on. Ah, it's another bad day. You know, yeah, I, I'm not going to get it back today. Who cares? Or you start losing the focus of trusting your game plan by your warm up. You came up with that game plan, and you 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 know you forget about it. You don't even trust it. You put it on the back burner, and you start going back into thinking about mechanics and oh, this magical swing, swing thought's going to fix everything. And it's not. And we've talked about that. But that's what you've wired your brain from years and years and thousands and thousands and thousands of golf balls on the driving ranges. You've wired your brain to think mechanically. So when you get out there and you get mentally fatigued, you lapse back into thinking mechanics and you stop thinking of where and you start thinking how again. And it just unravels quickly. And you hit a poor shot. I mean, I've been there. You hit a poor tee shot and you punch out. So you made a smart choice on hole 13 and you punch out and then you hit a shot up on the green and you're still frustrated about the poor tee shot and you're exhausted. So what happens is you don't put as much focus into reading the putt and you just kind of stand behind it instead of getting up there and feeling the break with your feet at the midpoint and up in the last three feet of the cup and behind the cup. So then you hit a putt and you know, next thing you know, it races four feet by and you didn't realize it slopes it back down a hill past the pin. And now you got eight feet coming back and you three putt and you're just losing it. And it's all from focus because you're mentally fatigued, because you haven't fueled your body properly. You haven't stayed hydrated. You haven't been doing visualization techniques that all the best players do to kind of prepare you. So you've already been in these positions and you know the decision to make and you're less likely to make a poor decision. But that's why you unravel on the back nine. It comes from unnecessary pressure and mental fatigue. Even though Brad has cracked the code to consistently breaking 90, there are still three major mistakes he's found from working with over 2,000 clients that will sabotage your round before you get to the first tee. Head to www.mygolfcode.com now to receive your free guide where he outlines all three faults and provides you with some easy action steps to start playing more consistent golf today. So the five ways we can combat that and play better golf, you know, number one is you got to have a game plan. You know, are you creating that pre-round game plan before you get to the first tee and are you using confidence and do you trust it? Or are you still warming up trying to go through five or six swing thoughts until you have a magical thought that hits a couple solid shots and think you have it because you don't have it. It ain't going to last for the next four and a half hours. You have to play with what you have, not with what you want to have. And that comes from warming up proper. That's going through my cheat sheet warm up, which is up and running now. So if you head to mygolfcode.com slash cheat sheet, you're going to be able to get my warm up series on how to warm up properly before your round of golf and get those cheat sheets to fill out. And what you have to do is you have to practice that. You have to practice going through your warm up. Or else you're not going to do it properly and you're going to just go right back to thinking of mechanics. So that takes practice. You have to practice how to warm up. It sounds crazy, but it's so, so true. You know, this will take time because you've wired your brain to think so much about how to swing the club over the last several years that you don't trust anything anymore. So you have to train yourself how to warm up, create a game plan and go trust it on the golf course with confidence. So you have to warm up properly too. If you haven't done it already, I mean, this was like four weeks ago. You got to change the way you practice, especially if you're in golf season. I know we're moving into the off season here in the northern states. But if you're down south and you're still in golf season, you should be spending 70% of your time on hitting golf shots when you're working on your full swing. So if you well, you know, simple math here, if you're going to practice 10 hours over the course of a month, so over the next four weeks, you put in 10 hours of golf practice. First of all, five hours at least should be short game really 60%. So we'll say six hours, six hours of 10 hours should all be short game, chipping, pitching, putting, bunkers, speed control, hitting putts online inside five feet. You should be working six hours of 10 on short game. From there, 70% of your time, so that, you know, two and a half to three hours should be hitting golf shots, should be going through this warm up. you know, doing a pre-round warm-up routine, playing nine holes on the driving range where you hit a shot and you have to let go if it's a bad shot and focus on the next one and what club would you hit instead of going right into, oh gosh, I must have done this. Let me try to you know rotate my hands more or don't move my hips or keep my head down. If you think that, you're doing it wrong. 
And then the last hour, hour and a half is mechanics. You should be working on the mechanics your coach has given you. If you don't have a coach, go get a coach. I've been coaching people for over 15 years. You got to have a coach. They can see things faster than you can, and they can get you working on the right thing in the right order to help you speed up your progress so much faster so you're not out there racking your brain with you know, 25 YouTube ideas in the last two hours of Golf Channel, and you're just a basket case. But your last hour and a half should be on mechanics. But that's what a month should look like if you put in 10 hours. If you're going to devote 10 hours, that's how it should be. So number two is you got to be practicing the right way that's re- basically wiring your brain of how to play better golf, of how to focus and let go of a bad shot and get into the next one and trust that with the proper game plan. So having a game plan, adjusting your practice routine. You know, number three is you got to start working on some visualization techniques. This is huge. And I'm working on a program right now of, of working on visualization in the mental side of golf for a lot of my clients and it's in the works and hopefully we can roll that out in a month or two, but you got to go through visualization the day you play golf or, or, and it doesn't take long. It takes guys like you just set aside three minutes in the morning or five minutes in the shower, but you got to set aside time where you're alone and it's calm and it's quiet. So it could be in the shower, could be, you know, five minutes in the car before you back out of the garage, before you go to the course, but you want five minutes where you kind of think through the next 18 holes. How are you going to play them? You know, I can, you know, just like right now, in, in a minute's time, I can go through several holes. If I was going to go play um, the former club I belong to, Tarmigan Country Club, if I was going to go out there, hole one, you know, first hole, shorter par four, goes downhill. I'm going to hit my driving iron off the tee. No reason to hit driver. Driving iron puts me on the flat part of the fairway up above where I have about 110 down the hill to the green. It should be a simple par, if not birdie. Hole two, par five driver off the tee. I'm going to tee up on the right-hand side. I'm going to aim it at the left bunker and play my straight to a little cut. And if it catches the hill, wonderful. If not, I'll have about a, you know, a, a good five iron, four iron to the green. If it catches the hill, I'll be sitting at a seven or six iron to the green and I'll go for it. And I'll go to a yard that's in the front of the green. So I don't go long and I don't really bring the bunkers that are left into play. You know, so now I'm already thinking through how am I going to manage that course? in my head. So I don't make poor judgment calls when I get out there. I've already kind of pre picked my tee shots, the clubs and where I'll probably be. So it's real easy to make the right choice instead of overthinking it based on how good or bad the last hole was can lead you to making a poor decision on the next hole. So you have to go through that visualization and literally in five minutes, you can play 18 holes in your brain. You can put yourself in some tougher spots where you know, well, sometimes I miss here. Let's be smart today and make sure I I make this shot out of those trees instead of trying to go for it like I did two weeks ago and make double bogey. So play that visualization game in your head. You got to do that. You got to be visualizing rounds of how to get in and out of trouble, how you're going to attack different holes off the tee so you don't make a poor judgment call on that tee box based on how good or bad the last hole was or how good or bad the front nine was. That's going to keep you from blowing up on the back nine and and preventing you from making some poor choices and back-to-back holes where all of a sudden you go double-double and you wonder what the heck happened to such a good round. So visualization. So pre-round warm-up. Are we doing it? Are we practicing correctly? Are we visualizing, you know, three to five minutes that day, you know, before golf? The best players in the world do visualization techniques for like 30 minutes a day every day. So we need to start doing them three to five minutes at least the day we're about to go to the golf course. Number four, stay hydrated. This sounds crazy, but, you know, another business I have is I coach people on fitness and nutrition. And I've worked with over 1,500 people on their nutrition. And nine out of 10 people just don't drink enough water. You got to drink water. You should be drinking half your body weight in ounces of water a day. So you got to wake up and the first thing in the morning, chug an eight, 10 ounce glass of water and force yourself to drink water because you're going to be outside in the elements, in the sun, testing your brain for four and a half to five hours. You got to be hydrated. I mean, it's okay to have a beer or two, but if you're not drinking water, that alcohol is just speeding up the dehydration process. So you got to stay hydrated, drink water, get your electrolyte drink. Um, I have mine. I love it. it. It helps me. There's no no caffeine built into it, but it gives me some vitamin B for focus. I love it. It's, it's helped me and a lot of my clients, but you got to have your rehydration drink. And then from there, 
number five is you got to feel your body properly. If you're not eating properly, if you're skipping breakfast and you grab a carb heavy lunch and then you head to the golf course, you're going to be exhausted and mentally sluggish the rest of the day. You set yourself up for failure, guys. You got to feel your body properly. What does that look like? For me, when I coach my clients on nutrition, you got to find your protein first. You should have some good protein with your breakfast and your lunch, good lean protein, healthy fats, healthy complex carbs, but find your protein first because that fuels your metabolism. That's going to help keep your energy up and your metabolism burning, which helps with your energy and your focus. And then you stay hydrated and then bring a healthy snack to the course. So you're not grabbing some crappy candy bar at the golf course, you know, bring something rich in protein, whether it's a protein shake, some, you know, low sodium beef jerky, but bring some protein to snack on some trail mix with some healthy fats are wonderful for brain function. So getting some, you know, almonds and cashews or whatever to get some healthy fats in, that'd be wonderful. But have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail. We know that in all aspects of life. So you got to have a game plan. You got to warm up properly. You got to be practicing correctly leading up to your rounds of golf. So change the way you practice. You got to start visualizing your rounds so you don't make poor decisions based on previous results. So you're sticking to your game plan that much more because you've already visualized it. So it's so much easier. It's like deja vu. You got to be hydrated. Stay hydrated through the day. Come on. And five, feel your body correctly, guys. You got to stay hydrated. You got to feel your body correctly. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if we're being honest here, look at the top 20 players in the world. What do they all have? Slim waistlines. None of them none of them are overweight with giant waistlines. They all have slender waists. They're all in shape. Golf is an athletic sport where you're explosively swinging a club rotationally, violently at a golf ball at 75 to 115 miles an hour, 30 to 45 times over 18 holes. So you got to get your body tuned up. Starts with staying hydrated because that's going to help you stop overeating. And then it dives into how do I fuel my body, which I can help you guys with because that's what I also coach people on. But that is the five ways to help stop blowing up on the back nine. So hopefully that helps you guys. Some things you can start implementing from there. Stay tuned next week. Um, next week, we are going to dive into how I believe it's how par has ruined your golf game. We're going to dive into par and the mental bomb that is in your brain and how it's just sabotaging your golf game out of the get-go for a lot of you. So we're going to dive into that come next week. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you don't want to miss that. That's going to just help unlock a lot of that pressure you're adding to yourself that we talked about in this episode. So stay tuned for that. Until then, you know, remember to swing easy, find the good in every shot. We'll talk to you all soon. This is the podcastfactory.com.